with the live stream. Oh, wrong button. So. Welcome everyone. This is the IPLD weekly call. It's September the 9th, 2019. And it's the same as every week we go over the, uh, over the stuff that we've done in the past week and then discuss whatever we want to discuss. So, um, do we have a volunteer for note taking? Thanks, Rod. And yeah, so I, as always, I start with myself. Um, so I've been the, I think, past two meetings, I've been at the PhosphoG conference, which is the free and open source for geospatial conference. It's a global conference um, every year with about 1,000 attendees. And I gave two talks one about geodata and IPFS, and one about um, stack on IPLD. If you want to more want to know more, just check out the notes. There the talks, the recordings are linked. And other than that, I worked on um, getting um, JS IPFS repo updated to the newest version within JS IPFS, which is harder than it sounds, and I couldn't get it working, so I handed it over to the um, JS IPFS team because it was just a huge time sink. So I wanted to help them out, but it's just totally pointless. Um, I've already spent like a week or two on it and it's just uh, never any stories of problems. So they I asked them to, to um, take it over. Um, all right. Um, then next is Eric. Hello. So we didn't do the, um, the meeting last week very successfully while you were out. So I've got kind of a combined update set. Um, Rod and I did a bunch of work on schema syntax stuff and cleaning that up and making sure everybody's on the same page and our implementations are in sync. Uh, we've done a lot of talking about details for configuring advanced data layouts. And one thing we've also tried to formalize more is the idea that we probably need some sort of any um, concept in the schema system. Uh, this turned out to be a little elusive. We've had some sort of placeholder references to it scattered around. Um, we took a stab at drafting what an any would look like that's described within the current system. And I think we found that it doesn't fit. So that's a little dissatisfying, and I don't know if we've come up with the idea of what we do want to do with it again. Might go back on the back burner to stew for a while. Um, Go IPLD Prime has gotten more code in it. Um, there's some, some nice refactors, like um, path segment is now a reified concept, and it is either a string or an int, and the implementation does reasonably efficient things with this as much as you can in Go. And some of those refactors will probably have performance improvements to selectors already because what it was doing previously, I found out after a lot of benchmark assembly reading, is um, there were some parts of the selector system that would cause really excessive amounts of small allocations to make these like wrapper objects. And the new path doesn't do that. So it's a nice improvement. Cogen has started to get some uh, don't repeat yourself thing of the code. I'm doing this all very belatedly because it's sometimes hard to guess where the correct not repeating yourself will be. Um, but some patterns have started to emerge. I started doing it. Last week I was looking at the system for the node builder, being able to return more node builders for child fields. Um, this is something that I didn't see coming 
super early on, but it became a lot clearer as the system progressed. Basically, recursion is necessary on the node builder side alone, not just on the node side, because when you are, for example, doing deserialization into a system with any sort of constraints on the values it can accept, you need to provide a node builder for your child values that carries those constraints through. So if you had a schema system, this would need to contain logical constraints. If you had something that was just bound to native typed code at all, you have to carry those constraints. So this turned out to be necessary. And um, it also turned out to be easier than I thought. So that's in now. And so last week after that got in, I was thinking deserialization POCs that work across the whole schema system might be in reach. And they work. Those are now done. I simultaneously don't want to oversell this, but oh my gosh, I'm really excited. There is now a small POC of code generated structs and a deserialization system that just works over them fairly transparently, still reusing all of the codecs that the non code gen stuff was using. So that's nice. And um, basically, it worked with no abstractions blowing up in an unusable way. So, um, so that milestone basically seems like everything is on track. And it's, I don't want to oversell it because it's a very small fraction of the amount of work to do in CodeGen overall in the future, but also it worked. So, yeah, it was a good week. I went on. I have a link for that. Uh, no, because of the, a lot of the diff is still on my local host, and I want to clean it up into about five different commits, and I haven't done it. So when you say POC, um, what, what form is that? Is it tests? Is it a separate project? or? Um, it will be in a branch, and it will land on master and go. I feel it will be primed probably pretty quick. I've just been doing all that stuff. It's in the... Um, the schema package and then the gen go package inside of that. And I've been keeping that passing test, but sort of in a just barely way. Like the feature completeness and stuff in master in those packages is very minimal. Okay. If that answers your question. So like I, it works. Yeah, I, I mean I'm just wondering what, what form it is. Is it is it like is this a thing that you can run? Is it a thing what how can you look at it? What what is it? Is it tests? Is it just code? Um, it is a little bit of tests. Trying to come up with a good test framework for this is still going to <laughs> yeah. do <it> well. <laughs> yeah, when you get code gen involved, it's just there's. It's a recursive thing that goes on. Yeah. It's, there's nothing that's super satisfying. You just have to have your tests and built in the compiler, and it's. Yeah. Um, so that's that's where that's at. Um, CI is not currently exercising that, so that's a kind of serious piece of tech debt to worry about soon. There are tests, but you have to go into that directory and run the code gen first, and then run those tests manually. So, yeah. uh, but there are these mm -hmm. tests. So this includes the whole um, set of concerns around regular fields optional fields, nullable fields, and optional nullable fields as well, because that was touchy. So, um, so as to making that more serious, I don't know, that test stuff needs to improve a lot. Um, there's lots and lots of filling in, like you can imagine how big the feature matrix is across all of the kinds times all of the representations. So, there's like one row and column through that whole matrix to fill that now so there's a lot to go. And I think that's the main reason I would call it POC is just because that percent factor is so low. Um, what else was I about that? I don't remember. Yeah, it's something else I was going to disclaim but cannot recall right now. <laughs> Cool.
good good uh, progress uh, while I wasn't here. So <laughs> cool. Um, next on my list is Rod. Okay. Um, so I had some time off this last week. Um, had my sister in town, and so I was having a, bre a breather. But um, aside from that, the last most of the last two weeks has been all about schemas. Um, there are three areas. There's the specs, the JS parser, and the Go parser. Um, so on the spec front, I've been trying to pull everything into a unified place. So the specs are canonical for how everything's done. There were some loose edges, like Jeremy had, had gone off and implemented a couple of proposed changes in his Go parser that weren't in the specs and weren't in the JS parser. And so putting that in the specs and then putting the JS parser and then making some tests for it. Um, so that kind of thing, that sort of unification activity. Um, trying to finalize advanced layout, basic advanced layout syntax and the ampersand link uh, shorthand syntax as well. Uh, in the spec that that the latter one is done um, as as um, Eric said we're still circling around this any type which is sort of required for this but uh, I think we've come up with a way to special case it in this case I think um, but the, in the specs yeah the, in the specs the any type is, is still loose um, but that can be that can be punted till later um, I have a test suite now that is usable across languages. So that was the original tension, intention when I started writing all these fixtures for testing basic usage. And I, uh, I spent a lot of time in, uh, in Go, in Go land, um, you know, mainly getting used to it all, but also um, seeing if I could put, pull Jeremy's stuff into line with the rest of the stuff I've got. Um, and so I've got a test framework now around Jeremy's work. I haven't put a pull request into there, so I don't know. I don't know yet how well it's going to suit what he's using it for now, or whether we need to fork it and and go a, diff a slightly different direction because he's using it for some code gen stuff, direct to Seabor, not uh, connected to IPLD Prime. Um, so I'll have that conversation with Jeremy in the next couple of days. I hope um, via pull request. Um, <laughs> yeah, but hopefully the aim is to get this advanced and link stuff sorted out and then that unlocks Michael. Um, the, oh, I guess we can do Michael next, but I, I did want to talk about um, the advanced layout basic syntax because that's the only thing that's up in the air is the, um, the syntax for, uh, well, I think defining is pretty easy, but using it is... I don't know if there's been disc uh, discussion overnight. Anyway, Michael, I'll let you do your update. Um, can I sneak back in first? You reminded me what I was trying to remember to disclaim earlier. <laughs> um, there's one more big part of the dependency tree in GoIPLD Prime for the cogen that is extremely placeholdery right now, and it's actually the uh, the data structures for representing the schema of types itself. They are currently uh, hand rolled and um, I think that's going to be fine because I want those to be like natively very ergonomic and yeah um, but the constructors for those are currently a bunch of functions which are called temp do not use me sort of they're just very very sharp edged constructors and the only way to create these values currently is in go code so the Go IPLD prime code base is missing any parser of schemas or direct loader of those. And all of the code gen is currently powered by those values that you can only create by those placeholder functions. So it's a big, obvious in one place set of placeholders at least, but a notable one. So kind of the good news around this is hopefully we can take a bunch of that stuff from Jeremy's project that Rod is now working on and at some point just go and fit it in the slot um, but at the moment I've been punting on that and assuming it'll fit nicely later disclaimer finished <laughs> uh, 
All right, so then it's time for my puzzle update. Hey, um, yeah, so, um, sorry, my head is not on straight. Um, okay, so Unix v2 made a ton of progress. Um, we now can like encode files uh, and directories recursively in JavaScript um, and spit out blocks and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's a little cute command line utility for debugging it. Um, still lacking tests and still lacking like a, a read interface and readable file system and all that stuff. So there's more work to do. Um, but that's all coming together. Unix V1 changes are like, this is just like the, the issue that never goes away. Um, there's now like just a, a general conversation about like which properties do we actually need to have. Um, but hopefully that'll get resolved soon enough. Um, and I think at this point, we need to have a conversation not only about what properties that we want to have, but what we want to do by default, um, which is probably no change from what we have today. Um, but anyway, um, and then, God, what else? What else is on my plate? Um, oh, yeah, OKRs. Um, there is an issue that, or sorry, a pull request that everybody should comment on um, for OKRs for next quarter, which we need to finish up this week. There's also an issue in the roadmap repo. Um, we're reaching out to our dependencies to try and surface what they need. So please look into that. And um, there's an issue in the new repo called auto um, around automating some team permissions. And there's a bunch of permission changes that need to land, with, that will land once that gets merged in. Um, so please take a look at that before I go and change a bunch of permissions on repos and make sure that it looks the same. Um, and I think that's about, um, yeah, yeah, that's everything that I got right now. All right, cool. Um, so I guess we can come back to the, I forgot what, uh, what I wanted to talk about, um, <laughs> but there was something. <laughs> Sorry, just trying to capture Michael's there. Um, I think I might need a couple of links for Michael's work, but. Um, we'll come back to that. Um, so my the one, the one I wanted you guys sort to all look at is issue number one ninety in the specs repo. And then if you scroll down to uh, Eric's comment, Eric's yeah, Eric's comment, the first comment there. Um, and, and and ignore the angle bracket bit in Eric's comment. Um, that's the that's the current um, proposal, broad proposal for defining advanced layouts in your schemas and then using them. So the angle brackets are not in play here. That may come later. But the way you would do it is you would use the keyword advanced. You give it a name. Um, the ALG thing is, um, I guess that keeps on coming back. We need some way of identifying. So if, if we're going to have that, then sure. Um, I don't know, Eric, are you, um, how do you, how are you feeling about that ALG thing? Cause I know we've, we've gone on and off with that. It seems like it's relevant if we're going to have parameters and yeah. it seems like we keep strongly suspecting that we're going to want to have parameters. I occasionally find the parameters one questionable, but if we keep instinctively thinking that we're going to have them, then like, I don't have strong arguments against having them either. Okay. Well, I mean, if we, if we do that, so we advance and you give it an arbitrary name and then ALG is where you could use it to connect it to logic uh, or connect it to a thing somewhere, some something that does the logic. The param stuff can, that, that's not, like that's sort of future work. It's not necessary to move forward right now. Um, and then to use them, you, uh, you would have to use this um, representation thing. So if you had a, like a hamped, then you would say type whatever map so you say, you say the kind then you say represent representation advanced and then you give it the advanced name 
and then you can use it like foostering. The shorthand version is a little more complicated and uh, I think we should punt on any shorthand for now and that's the tenor of the discussion in that thread as well. So I just wanted to see if we can make, if we could get some basic progress on this because once we can, then I can merge some stuff and start making all the code pull in that direction. So to me, it sounds fine, but I'm not as deep into schemas as Eric is. So, yeah. What, hmm. So I'm looking at Eric's comment, and there's the alpha one, which, oh, I see. And then the delta one at the bottom. Uh, issue number 190. I don't know if you're in the same yeah, issue. Yeah, but the other one there. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I think I'm in 182. Sorry. Yeah, it's it, so I pulled this particular question out into 190. It's it's the same. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I was like, so for what it's worth, I, I do. I'm gonna give up on the angle brackets. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I really believe that we'll have a strong desire for template mechanisms later either, but that's. My belief of that is of the weak form where I'm not sure the trade-offs make sense rather than the strong form of I think this is morally valid from some sort of important first principle. So, and the rest of your argument around that stands. So, yeah. And, and I'm also convinced that, yeah, the trying to have an inline shorthand is not the most important thing in the world. Um, can, is there some way to associate a schema with an advanced layout for the internal representation of the blocks in the advanced layout? So I keep tending to think that that might be useful, but if so, is almost entirely an implementation detail that belongs inside the advanced layout and having it referenced from the outside where we're using it is... Right, right, right. So well, so like so like advanced rot thirteen bracket, like inside of that, I want to basically associate the schema with it. It'd be in there. Yeah. My current theory is that whatever you're referring to with that elk thing should include both the logic and, if necessary, the schema. Like for what, someone what, to what, yeah. the internal guts that? knowledge. Mm. <clears throat> so, for example, in in the with the hamped, uh, the hamped itself would come along with a schema, and it would it would use the schema internally, and and then to use the hamped, you would declare I and advanced hash map, and then some name that we come up with. Yeah, and just, then that, but then and then and then you defer to the hamp to decide how to deal with its own schema stuff. There's this discussion about saying making assertions about the root block and being able to traverse all the way in, but I kind of agree with Eric at the moment that it's it, the utility of that is probably limited to the point where um, the complexity gets out of hand and maybe it's not worth even going down that rabbit hole just yet. I mean, I, I mean, I would use that immediately like I would be able to ingest a single file and then spit out the entire API for it essentially and then you would just need to hook into you would need to like hook into the advanced layout only insofar as you need to add logic to it it would already do all of the schema validation for you so and and I mean the difference between having like hooking it up after the fact from a different file and having it in file just means that it's a less compelling design language because now I have to have a separate file for every advanced layout that I ever create, um, which is just annoying. Um, and I, I really don't know what the parameters are for. I really don't understand that. Like, those are gonna have to be encoded into the actual block structure so they belong in the schema. So if this isn't where the schema is, then I don't know what these params are for, or the algs. This is this is usage though. This is this is not on declaring the advanced layout. This is how to use how to how to use an advanced layout. So, in in this case, rot thirteen is some 
advanced layout that's defined elsewhere and it's you know it's got its own place where the logic and, the, and its schema lives and this is a user saying oh, i want to pull that thing off the shelf and use it um so why why wouldn't you just encode the algorithm into the block structure though no so the the alg that's just an identifier that could have been name that could have been identifier that alg is just a name that okay. eric came up with today well, oh, okay well like even then okay all right so like, so the, like what what i what i don't like about this is that we're we're taking some kind of parameter defining it here and then it's not actually being encoded into the data necessarily which is problematic like it, it's my instinct to just say like if it's not in the data then it doesn't exist and if you want to set up if you want to pass a parameter in you pass it in when you create the data structure so i i think we've got to be careful with the, with the whole parameters thing let's not get caught up on it because it's still that's a separate issue that i think okay. we can we can punt on because but yeah it is questionable whether they're even useful um my the way i was conceiving it was this would solve the some of those concerns that the filecoin team had about those parameters and not wanting them to go into root blocks because they're always fixed. So you could say in the Filecoin spec, I'm using Hampt and the parameters are this, always this. Whereas in other use cases, you could say, um, you could leave that concern to code layer, or perhaps there's an option in the, in the, uh, in, in the logic for the, the advanced layout that always encodes it no matter what you provide in the, like you might provide bit width of 13 and it still writes bit width of 13 into the block. Um, but your schema is the thing that is directing the logic to do that um, it, rather than doing it via code. So you're, you know, this just, it's just a path to getting those parameters into the logic. And remember this I, is I, at the, at the I forward know, I, the user end of it. Yeah. yeah. I, I know why they're asking for that and I'm sympathetic, but it's also a bad practice. Like, like I mean, we, we've got, we've gone over this like, like dozens of times, but like things need to be self-describing and that means putting this into the data. Like, like if they don't want the params to be encoded into the data, then they just need to come up with some sane defaults that we'll assume and that will be part of like the, that are part of the schema, like the schema for the advanced layout rather than a parameter that you're tossing in. Like that should be a fixed thing. It should not be like, yeah, if you, if you want to, yeah, if you want to set an arbitrary default for a parameter, then do it in the schema for the advanced layout. Don't do it in the parameterization of the usage of the advanced layout, because then you can change it. You, you can take the same data and, and adjust those parameters, which is like a level of flexibility that we probably don't want to give people because then they'll create less self-describing data structures. So I think the question we want to narrow in on for the moment neither agreeing nor disagreeing with the params thing because yeah it's complicated mm -hmm. i don't even know in my opinion is mm -hmm. the thing rod wants to narrow in on i think in order to figure out what to do with the parsers is is there more than literally one unit of information like more than one scalar that is going to go into the definition of an advanced layout because if there's more than one then we want to block syntax like this right and if there's not more so i just posted another comment there which boiled down <laughs> eric's example mm -hmm. further get rid of the params is That's that algorithm so is algorithm optional so my example in my examples i had the name of the advanced layout being the thing that would that would tie that thing to the logic whereas eric's suggesting we go back to this idea where you have some name that identifies it and that that you could like i just put an ip address slash in there just for example that this is an arbitrary string that is some somewhere is in some some registry or mapping that says this thing mm -hmm. is the code it, it, you can connect it with code here and maybe in in go you would have compile flags that would say when you encounter mm -hmm. ipld slash rot 13 then you should connect to this GitHub repo, which has the all the code in it, and so pull it all together to do your code gen, make your interfaces. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, I just don't want it to be required because we just don't we don't have 
<laughs> we we don't have that system yet, and we won't in the first few iterations. So I just want well, to make sure that, that you can create these without attaching this name to it if you don't need it. The the, the other alternative is to like I, I don't think I don't actually don't think that that is required at all for now. Like we could let me just do another comment there, which is just completely remove that block and the name advance is what you're connecting. So the name behind advance is what you're connecting. So, you know, dash dash map rot 13 and then point it to a place. It's just when you do that, no, you still have flexibility when you do that. It's just, mm -hmm. you've got to have something that maps that, that string rot 13 to mm -hmm. logic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean like, so when you shove this through like the, the semi code anything that I have, like all of the APIs that come out of it are named the type names. Um, and, and you would also end up with like a class called rot 13 that was the advanced layout class. And so you would basically hook into that to add any logic to it for the time being. Um, or I guess you would also have to use, use that in order to attach more schema to it. Um, but, but so, so what about when we, like, let's say we come up with, or we have, let's say, let's take HashMap, for example. It's, it's a complex bundle of logic mm. that we're going to export, and then people are going to say advanced HashMap, and they're going to mm. connect that to our logic. Mm. Uh, does that flow work in what you're conceiving now with your JavaScript code, Jim? I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned that you're pushing yeah. code too, too close to the user when we're actually exporting concrete things. We don't need you to code gen hash map. We have it. We just need you to have a place where it yeah. connects into what you're using. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, yeah, it would be like one line, right? Like I'd, I'd import your hash map library and then I would take my code. Uh, so, so like, sorry, you have your schema, you're referencing Hant. Um, the thing that I spit out would give you a Hant class and then you would call a method on it and pass in whatever module that you wrote to actually implement the Hant. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's like one line that the user has to use to, to just configure that. Um, and yeah. Well, if that if that bottom one if that works for now, mm -hmm. like that gives us actually space to evolve to dynamic algorithm names or parameters or whatever later on. For now, right. that yeah. seems to me to be the most basic that we could use right now. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. Um, and as far as like, oh, another option too is that when I do the gen, I could pass in the implementation of the advanced layout so that by the time that it hits them, it already actually had the implementation. So that's another option. Yeah. Well, that um, would be, I, th I think that would be the Go style, which would, I think, would yeah. make JavaScript as well. That's probably better. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would at some point in the future like to be able to define the schema for an advanced layout in the same file as another schema, um, just for simplicity of design language. But I mean, for right now, I can just make them separate files, it's fine. Um, because I'm gonna have to <coughs> pass them all in independently anyway, so. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I think the one thing that I care about for the, the syntax here that's distilled out of this whole discussion is as long as the word advanced is a keyword and it starts all the way on the left side of I'm mm -hmm. happy about that and as long as something also appears in the vicinity of that representation thing so it doesn't have like a namespace in collision with built-in representations then I'm happy mm -hmm. and that last suggestion has those two major boxes checked and the rest I'm relatively it's just about. a lot of tokens Eric it's a lot of tokens <laughs> <laughs> that, that whole freaking incantation of type foo string string representation advanced route 13. Yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> but, it, it, but it will be interesting to, see to use the if we get sick of it. RS, so that's, that's on you, buddy. Yeah. I mean, ha having dealt with the schema syntax a bit, it, it does make sense, though. Um, mm. it's, just, it's just, it's honestly it's the way. Yeah, I mean, the the weird thing to me actually is just seeing representation on the same line as the rest of it, because usually the representation is coming after like an angle bracket somewhere, um, because I'm usually using it like in a union. Um, but no, it does make sense though. Do yeah, we need, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do, do we actually need 
the advanced keyword in that line though? Yes. That, that <laughs> I have an opinion. This. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because you would have to reasonable. Because, okay. It. But you already oh, okay. Well yeah, I guess if you if you haven't actually oh yeah, okay, okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what you end up with is like a flat structure out of it, so you don't have ordering, and so you can't say like, "Oh, that was already defined up there." Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. 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 That's fair. Um, now you have a fixed list of of representation types for every kind, basically, and advanced mm -hmm. available for every kind. Right. Right. And like, I do need to know that it's representing itself as a string. Um, Yep, and that, and this and this gives us that flexibility again. Like I, I still don't. I'm not that comfortable with not when you would define advanced rot thirteen, saying that that's what kind it is. I still would rather have a kind there, but but this does remove any duplication and it allows you to reuse an advanced layout as different kinds if it could do. Like you could use a, a hamped as a um, as a, a list, an unordered list, if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. I'd be aware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so when you think about the usage, once you have these in multiple files and you're sort of passing them around, the type that comes out of one schema will end up, you'll, you'll actually end up attaching the, the, here's how to treat this as a string logic to that type and then probably passing that type into the next schema parse that uses that as an advanced layout. So you'll probably even end up with some symmetry in the naming as well just for convenience. Mm. Well, let's let's do this. Let's do this this week, okay. and let's see how it shakes out. And uh, yeah. Yeah. and hopefully it works. But if not, we can we can adjust. Okay. Yeah. That's good. All right. Um, do we have anything else? Anyone? We already ten minutes <laughs> over time. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I close the meeting and say goodbye and see you all next week and stop the recording, stop the live stream.